Good Packer Nation morning. It's a Wednesday morning, everybody. Yeah, it's Wednesday, and it's Prediction Wednesday this time around because tomorrow is the second preseason game, Packers versus Raiders. So time for Packer Nation roll call. If you are out there, let me know who you are, where you're at, and we'll give you a shout-out. While everybody is kind of getting on today, I want to talk about uh, – we got to talk about the Julius Peppers, Clay Matthews thing once again just shortly. I wanted to comment on – Ted Thompson's statement about that. I love how he got up there. This is my favorite thing about how Ted Thompson handled this was he get out. Hey, Grayson is here. How are you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, is uh, uh, Elias is here. All right. We're going to have to go into shout outs because they're coming on. Hector is back. Yo, yo, yo. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Game day tomorrow, folks. Jose, Amber, Tim, and Ned is here again today. Great. Um, He's finally, Grayson says he's finally on time. Well, hey, you and Ned, man, two of a kind, I guess. Jonathan is here. Armando, Armando is back. Good to see you. And he says good morning to Packer Nation. I think he does that almost all the time. Good morning, Elias. Tammy is here. Sam is here from Arcadia, California. When you said Arcadia, I thought you meant Arcadia, Wisconsin, which is right where I come, came from. Angel is here. Sean is here. Mark. Joyce and Jay and Jeff, good to see all of you guys. Well, yeah, yesterday... Um, I was, or actually this morning, I was checking out the Ted Thompson press conference, and here's the thing I love about that. Give me a heart if you love Ted Thompson getting up there and stating that he's, number one, that he, they stand by their players. Andy is on, I see. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, stating that he stands behind his players, then says, that's all I'm going to say about this. And if you, here's what I love. If you want to say anything else, go ahead and say it to the NFL and the Players Association. He, like wants us to shovel all our hate on them right now. And I absolutely love that. Yeah, give me a heart if you are happy that Ted Thompson got up there and said, go ahead, lay it all out, but put it on the NFL and the Players Association. Let's get a hold of them and let them know how we think. Because again, he said, I'm, I'm not really a player in this. Um, so yeah, I thought that was fantastic. All right, let's see who else is out there. Steven is here. Roxanne, good morning from Florida, Claremont, Florida. Uh, Jose says, go Packers. Uh, Harold is here. Haven't seen you, I don't think, before, Harold, but you are from Ontario. I see Windsor, Ontario, giving a shout out. So I do know there have been people from Canada and our Ontario in particular. So I'm sorry if I miss, mistook that. Joey Harlow and Hector says he has a bet with his friend tomorrow. Loser pays the bar tab. All right, guys, because today is prediction day. Now, don't put your prediction up just yet, okay? Don't put it up just yet. Just hold off for a little bit, okay? Because if you put it up now, I won't be able to, to, to say it for everybody. Um, just hang on for a second because we do want to talk about this Packers-Raiders matchup coming up tomorrow night. Now, remember, last year Packers played the Raiders. This was a very significant game because if I'm remembering correctly, this was the game that put the, the, the Packers squarely in the playoffs. Mike McCarthy got some flack about the game because in a lot of ways, we did not play that well, but we won the game 30-20. to 20. So I could kind of see his point. The last year's game against the Raiders was an absolute symbol of last year's Packer team. In the first half last year against the Raiders, the Packers generated less than 100 yards of total offense. Now, does that not sound like symbolic of the 2015 year? Um, uh, no, Joey, Rodgers won't play tomorrow, I don't believe at all. Um, but was that not symbolic? The offense sputtered through the entire first half of that game, and the defense was called upon to make a stand, and a couple times in particular, they came through. The first, one, first guy's name you're going to recognize, Micah Hyde, had a pick in that game, if you'll recall, who just had a magnificent pick in the red zone, taking points off the board, quite literally, for the Cleveland Browns. Micah Hyde's going to be a big player in this game because I think that they're going to strike. They're going to try to strike with Crabtree and, Tree and Amari Cooper uh, early and, and often. Um, but Micah Hyde wasn't the only one on the defense. Um, of course, Julius Peppers, had, I think, recorded his eighth sack in that game. And also Demarius Randall with a pick six. So not only was the defense sputtering, but the or the offense sputtering, but the defense was having to put points on the board for us. Um, and now I know we did pull that game off, and I have nothing against that. But there were a few things that I think we do need to correct, and I think are going to be interesting even in this preseason game this time around. 
One is we struggled against the run, and Jake Ryan, uh, it was kind of a coming of age for him and a welcome to the NFL sort of a game for him because he found himself shooting the wrong gap from, from time to time. And the... the um, the Raiders, the Raiders running game really gashed us. Latavius Murray had like 21 rushes for 76 yards. I mean, I think that guy at that time was had more rushes than anybody in the league, even Adrian Peterson at that time. So we knew that was coming, and yet we couldn't stop it. Now, that, that was a little bit concerning. So here's the question for this year. Is the inside linebacker group going to galvanize and stop the run uh, plus the fact that we've got some young guys in the interior of the defensive line, will we be able to stop the run against the Raiders? Yesterday I talked about it. The Raiders want to run the ball, and they want to run it not in a Chip Kelly-style, nifty, cute offense. They want to run the ball down people's throats and pound the rock. I think the Packers are going to have a very big test and I think the Raiders are going to come at us early, and I think we're going to struggle early. I think we're going to have some adjustments to make, uh, and we are going to struggle against the run, I do believe, right off the bat. So uh, we'll see how it goes, of course, tomorrow. But I do think, and I, you know, you're, I know Coach McCarthy said um, just the other day, the major component of who's going to make it and who's going to get reps um, for the Packers against the Raiders is is uh, the medical report. So. We'll have to check it out and see what happens in terms of the medical report because really that's going to determine who uh, gets on the field. And Ned says three-point game. Um, I'm going to be fairly close to you right now. Um, actually, I haven't put my score together. So again, hold off on that. We'll, we'll get to that just in a minute. But we are going to have to show, find a way to stop the run. I do expect uh, our, the interior of our defense to struggle because they're going to come at them hard. And we are going to learn a lot of hard lessons tomorrow early on. We'll see how, how that shakes out. Secondly, we know, I mentioned this too, uh, you got Cooper and you got uh, Crabtree, who is, I believe, second year into their offense, feeling comfortable, and he looked very good when the Raiders played the Cardinals in the preseason. They're going to look to spread us out, and we're going to, our defensive backfield uh, is going to have its work cut out for us. Because again, if you're rushing the ball effectively, Guess what happens to the passing game? I mean, the playbook could be wide open. If the Raiders keep themselves in third and short, the Packers could very well early on find themselves with their heels against their own end zone. And I do. Honestly, I expect that to happen. Let me make one comment. I think I made this yesterday as well. I don't care if we win or lose this game. In fact, in preseason games, losing can be better than winning the game. Losing can show that we have more teachable moments on the field for young players, especially when our young guys and our third stringers are playing against the Raiders first and second team or people who are projected to be first and second team starters and second team. So the rate and the Raiders are going to focus on that because that's more their need. The Packers are, we have shown our, our requirement for the offseason is to stay healthy, and that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to look for in this game is not the score, the final score. What I'm going to look for is whether we see some of these young guys make great plays, whether they show flash plays against players that legitimately could be out against them on the field during the regular season. Of course, we don't play the Raiders this year, but you know what I mean. If we see, you know, if we see Callahan drop back in the in the pocket and throw um, to Justin Perillo, and and you're looking at the matchup there, I think, and you guys can let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you think if you're on the same page as me with this comment right now. Justin Perillo, I think, can challenge Richard Rodgers for the second tight end position right now. That guy has been money, and he has done it in the past. And the, the Raiders game last year, he had a big catch. He had, I believe, another big catch, even in the Detroit game with the Richard Rodgers Hail Mary. I am all for Richard Rodgers and the way that he took his weight under control. But at the same time, Justin Perillo is making a case right now. Um, so it will be interesting to see how many reps he gets whether Richard Rodgers can show up in this second preseason game, he may get more reps this time around, but Richard Rodgers has really been quiet. We saw Cook with a catch. We saw Perillo. We saw Kennard, Backman go out there and be productive. 
And I think Perillo has, I think he is a heck of a player. The guy just gets it done. He re, to me, Justin Perillo is like the John Kuhn of our, of our wide receiver core. The guy, when you need him, he is just in the right place and gets the job done. Which leads me to another comment about last year's regular season game against the Raiders. Remember, Kuhn had a big short yardage touchdown in that game. Kuhn played a big role in our offense in that game in providing a spark as he did in the past. Remember, obviously, we don't have any John Kuhn on this team anymore. So this will be a game in which we get a chance to see whether Ripkowski can truly step up and begin to step into the role that we need him to fill as you know because John Kuhn's shoes are pretty big for a guy who didn't play that many snaps not only as a fan favorite but he was a guy who provided when the offense needed and I see a few tears going across for for John Kuhn but you know what guys Packer Nation we got to move on and we got to keep our eyes on this Ripkowski kid and we got to get behind him give me a heart or a thumbs up if you're ready I know I'm sad about Kuhn not being here too but give me a heart or a thumbs up if you're ready to just go ahead now and get behind Ripkowski and give him everything you got and, I mean, heck, we need to find out something we can chant for this kid. Let's see him maybe get a chance. Let's watch him when he gets a chance on short yardage. Watch him when he is lead blocking. Let's see him start to pancake people rather than stand them up. And I, feel, I see Packer Nation is ready to embrace this kid because he is truly trying to make his way in this world. And he did it the hard way. He did it last year on special teams. He did it with one single beautiful catch out of the backfield last year. But he has yet to prove himself. Of course, we are all saddened and some dismayed that John Kuhn won't be with the Packers this year. But it's time to embrace Aaron Ripkowski because we are going, there are going to be times when we're going to need him too. And I do want to reinforce my statement that Perillo is out there. He is making an interesting case right now. And I will be interested to watch him in another yet another preseason game because I think he may be rolling himself into a position where he sees more regular season reps than he did last year. And if he does that and produces, now we have a kid who could truly take a second spot um, behind. I, it looks to me, and I have I predict that the Packers want Jared Cook to be the starter. They're gonna give him those chances. But you know, Richard Rodgers is gonna have his chances too. And now we see um, Perillo come up and make a case for himself. This tight end battle has become probably the most one of the most interesting ones on the field right now. And you add to that the fact that Adams has be, you know Adams is another one who's dropped off the page. We're not sure about um, Monty's uh, health right now. Uh, he had a nice catch against the Browns. We'll see it, you know if he's able to go ahead and go again this week uh, tomorrow. But Ty Montgomery can make a case um, now because Devontae Adams has, again, disappeared from the landscape at this point. But guess who's really looking to step into that spot? Another one that I think can drop, can jump, not into a, a second spot, but into the third. How about Jared Abraderis? Anybody got any response to that? How about Jared Abraderis? Any hearts, thumbs up for this kid who had a couple just bummer years, man? We were so excited to see him get picked as a Wisconsin Badger. He, he gets injured. Then he has this debacle where he gets relegated to... He basically, by hook and by crook, ended up making the team again. And now he is in position. And once again, last week, showed his medal with a nice showing and a beautiful, beautiful run on the out pass. Remember that out pass where we had one guy to make miss and he gets the first down just barely. That was a beautiful play. I love it. Great to see Abby. I see Oscar's giving Abby some props. Um, but yeah, this is an, it's becoming an interesting offseason for the Packers. Now, every, all things said and done, I am very hopeful when the dust clears on this preseason that the Packers have Julius Peppers, they have Clay Matthews, and if that's the case, this offseason and this preseason is shaping up to be a really important one. Because a lot of young players are getting a lot of time. A lot of players that we've seen potentially and are starting to show it and walk through the open doors that are, that are coming. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Jake Ryan can get on the field and do some things. 
Um, that, that inside linebacker group is incredibly exciting. It's interesting to see them. And of course, it was super interesting, the game against the Browns, because guys who we didn't expect flashed in that game. So we'll see if they can put together multiple performances, and it will be interesting, okay? So it is time for your predictions. Packers versus the Raiders. And actually, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a little wrench in it. I'm going to hold off on mine at the end. And, I, and, and I'm going to do it in a post instead. I'll post it on GPN, and we'll see how close it comes. But let me ask you this. Let's go through them, guys. Right now, what are your predictions? Packers versus Raiders. I know it's a preseason game, so again, don't feel bad if you predict a loss. Because a loss, again, can be more valuable than a win in the preseason. Okay? You learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. So let me know what are your predictions right now. Who's got one out there? I know Ned said a three-point game. Ned, what is your score prediction? Uh, Lynn is saying, go Ringo, go Ringo showed some flash in this past game. He's going to have to stack, again, this productivity. Keith says 24-14 Packers. Eric, 14-24 Pack. 24-14 uh, Green Bay is popular. Jeff, 17-14. Trent says 21 pack 13 Oakland. I think I am. They're going too fast. Now they're coming in Hector and they're jumping on me guys. Well, you guys can see him. Cody 24, 17 pack. That's a very popular score. Joey says 21, 17 pack. Ned says 13, 10. Pete 17, 20 pack 28, 17 uh, Packer says Josh Rick 17, 13. Okay. You guys see him coming. Most people, again, predicting the Packers to win this one. Let me tell you, I'll just give you a little clue since I'm, I, I know I pulled a fast one on you guys by not giving my score right now, but let me tell you what I think the key ingredient is going to be to this, this game, whether we win it or lose it, okay? The key ingredient to winning and losing, and again, I, I, honestly, I don't care which one we do, as long as we learn, as long as it's a, a valuable game for young players, uh, Jerry says 24-9. Johnny says 24-14. Sean says 27-21. The Packers win. Here's my key ingredient. How many snaps does Brett Hundley play? This is my key ingredient. If Brett Hundley can't play, can't go, I mean, he's been practicing, so I'm assuming he'll get some reps. If he can't play, I think the Packers lose this game. And the reason is because even though I think um, you know, I think both Williams and uh, Callahan did, but Callahan in particular running the two-minute drill did a fantastic job, I thought. But with the way that the Raiders are going to approach this game, they're going to give him fits in this game, which will be fantastic for his development. But I think he will struggle. If Hundley doesn't play this game or doesn't play very much, I think the Packers will lose this game. If Hundley, here's what I'm hoping, because I missed seeing Hundley play already two games. We had one canceled, right? Hall of Fame game. And he got hurt, couldn't play against the Browns. I hope Hundley plays the entire first half in this game. Now, normally I wouldn't want to risk a player that's important, but Hundley as a second stringer, I want to see him play the whole first half. And then I want to see Williams and Callahan, I want to see him flip-flopped, and I want to see them play the, a quarter each. If that's the case, I think the Packers win a close one. Um, if, 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 Hundley can't play. This game is going. This game could be very ugly. I'm just going to let you in on that right now. Uh, if Hundley plays a half, I think we're going to see a kid that really shows, you know, because he is one of those mental developers as well. He's an athletic kid. I said this before. When he rolled out of the pocket, he looked a lot like Aaron Rodgers. He had, you know, shoulder cocked, uh, but eyes downfield, and with a sense of exactly where he's out of, at on the field. And the other thing. Joe Callahan showed that exact same trait. Aaron Rodgers' traits are trickling down at this point. We are seeing it happen right in front of us. It's a beautiful thing. You watch that game, and Callahan has that sixth sense, that vision that Aaron Rodgers has, that vision for when the protection breaks down, how to dance around a step or two, but keep your eyes down the field. And then when you roll out, eyes down the field. This is going to be an exciting game in that regard. But again, to me, the key ingredient to this game is how many snaps does Brett Hundley play, okay? So if you have a few more um, uh, predictions, go ahead and put them up. I am going to, I'm going to give a, a more reasoned approach to mine. I'll kind of fill it out since I know you guys, you don't have a chance to do that just in the comments. 
So I'll give you that this afternoon or later this morning to make sure you can read. Just jump on GPN. I'll post it on the Facebook fan page and you can see and I will match it up again. And then we're going to come back and give shout outs. Now, last week I had to already track down who to give the shout out to, but um, I, they contacted me and, I, and I'm, the name is, I should have got the name. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but they contacted me. He's like, I guess I'm the winner. Okay, so don't be afraid to let me know if you nail it on the noggin because it is very difficult. You can see how many of these predictions come through and more and more come as the video is posted. So if you, and in particular, if you got it live on the show while the show was going on, I want to say your name and you deserve props, okay? So we'll try to give them the best we can, but if I miss something, if you're not sure, but or if you nail it on the noggin, don't be afraid to send us a Facebook message on GPN and let me know, okay? Andy, my good friend Andy out there, um, says 3128 for the good guys. That would be the Packers. Um, so he's got a more high scoring game and that'll be interesting. And that's an interesting caveat too, because um, the Packers, they move the ball well at times, and even with Callahan in there. Now, if Hundley gets in there, that's an entirely different story. We saw what Hundley, it wasn't it Hundley that had five touchdowns in a game or whatever last, I think it was the, which, which game was it? But Hundley showed four or five, four touchdowns. I forget, somebody will correct me on that, I'm sure, because it's not coming to mind right now. But anyway, had a fantastic game. He showed that he can be a scoring machine. And uh, of course, him at the time, Jeff Janis was on the field. And so that will be a different story. We know Jeff Janis, again, out four to six weeks is what they say. I think Jeff Janis, this this is is a huge blow to Jeff Janis' chances. Ryan says 21-17 Packers. Jared says high scoring if Hundley plays. Yeah, I, I think that could be the case. Um, I definitely think that could be the case. Adam, Adam Rogers says 24-14. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Pickering says 17-13. I'm assuming Packers on that one. Well, guys, it's going to be exciting. It's a great way to start your Wednesday because we're going to start after, if you can get through today, we can start rolling on into the weekend. But not only that, we've got a Thursday game in between, and I love that uh, because it just means, we're, number one, it means we get to watch our Packers earlier. We don't have to wait as long. If you're like me, you're very impatient. Lynn says, win or lose, love my pack. Totally agreed, of course. I think we all agree. And probably go ahead and give Lynn a heart if you agree for that. Because, I mean, that, that's a beautiful, beautiful statement. We love this team. Um, of course, we want them to win. And we expect them to win from time to time. And sometimes we're very disappointed when they don't. <laughs> However, because we're fans, right? We're fanatic about it. But yeah, we love this team. Not, that will never change, ever and that's one of the beautiful things about Packer Nation. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be a great end of the weekend because we can watch a Thursday game. You get through today, it's hump day, you're headed toward the weekend. Thursday night, you got Packer football to watch. And then going into the weekend, a full slate more of games. I kind of like it when the Packers play off the Sunday, uh, off the weekend slot, because then I can watch some of the other games that I may be interested in, but I don't want to watch them when they're playing at the same time as the Packers. So I am going to kind of close it down with that, guys. Thank you so much for jumping in. If you want to follow this uh, this uh, live video blog, uh, I believe you can just, you may have to click on the screen first and then it'll ask you if you want to follow it. You can follow it there and that way it will notify you when you're signed on to Facebook that we are going live. And also if you want to unfollow, that's fine. I understand some of you don't want to get notified about this every single day. And the way it looks and the way it's been responded to, I think we're going to be uh, doing it every single day. Chris French is giving me some crap out there. He says pink is definitely my color. It's, it's, I don't know. It's Heather Red, I've heard it called. This is the guy, this is the dude. I saw a dude wearing this shirt and I thought it was so cool I grabbed it myself. And so, who you are out there, you look cool in the shirt, man. Um, and I look cool in the shirt. So, he's giving me crap. You look good in pink. It takes a man to wear pink, all right? Um, so Lynn says, go Pat, go. Ryan says, <laughs> yeah, Johnny is here. Uh, Preston is here. Good to see you guys. Uh, Jared says it's salmon colored, isn't it? And I will take that. I'll take whatever, whatever gets the pressure off, right? Uh, you know, because otherwise I have to cry myself to sleep every night. So um, guys, you have a fantastic weekend. Again, we have some really exciting things coming up. I will be filling you in more and more on this new free app that is coming out that we are helping, we're helping to distribute. 
as it is developed, this is going to be brand new. No, it's never been seen before. I'm going to be giving you direct. We're sending somebody down to Las Vegas for in to represent Packer Nation in Las Vegas when they, for the first time, reveal this app live to no more than 2,500 people. This is going to be a huge event. It's going to be a huge thing. And I am going to start letting you guys in on this because I want Green Bay Packer Nation to be uh, represented in this new league. This is, okay, so a couple things quick about this just to get you guys excited. And again, I, I can't tell you a whole lot. I'll tell you more later. Number one, it, you will play live with the gameplay. You will play live as the games are going on. No, it will not interrupt your viewing of your beloved Green Bay Packers, but you will be playing live. Number two, you will never have to choose to follow or like another team or players from another team, okay? So if that is huge for you, uh, th which it is for me. This is the reason I, I stay away from fantasy football. I think it's it's great. The other reason is I'm not interested in pouring over stats and spreadsheets all the time. Some of you are, and that's great. And you guys can you play your fantasy football if you love it. But 80% of people do not play fantasy football, and this is this got this game is for you guys. It's for fantasy football players too, because it's just gonna be so doggone much fun. But I am looking forward to it. I cannot wait to, it, to, to show it to Packer Nation. I'm, it's, again, this is completely out of my hands. I will say this, the creator of this, the creative director who is overseeing the creation of this game is the former creative director, listen carefully, of EA Sports, creative director over the creation of Madden, NCAA football, and NASCAR. So guys, you can guess just how cool this is going to be. Have you ever played a game live while your team was on doesn't interrupt your viewing of your beloved Packers, but gives you a chance to smack talk your friends and win real prizes. You will earn lifetime achievement that will get you prizes in real life, okay? It's an exciting thing coming out, guys. And I, I can't say enough about it, but I do not want to talk about it too much because I know that I've already gone over my time today. I appreciate your patience, and I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Guys, I will talk to you again tomorrow, and tomorrow it's, tomorrow it's going to be really rough because tomorrow it's going to be like the day of the game, and we got to wait till tomorrow night. So I will probably go over my prediction and let you guys, you know, maybe go over that a little more in depth. We'll talk about the injury report, of course, and any other Packer news that happens to come up, guys. I am super happy. Hey, later, Jared. I'm super happy you guys jumped on, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Get the ring. Go Pack.